Welcome to Retire with Purpose, a show specifically designed to help you maximize your financial confidence in retirement. Casey Weed is the CEO and Chief Visionary of Howard Bailey Financial, a certified financial planner and Wall Street Journal bestselling author. He's your host on Retire with Purpose. Hey, I'm Casey Weed, and we believe in retirement strategies that are driven by meaning and purpose. Join us this week and every week as we discuss planning for your best retirement, pinpointing your purpose, building a rock solid financial plan, and unpacking trending topics that could impact your financial future. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Retire With Purpose, the science of retiring with confidence, the art of living with purpose. This is your host, Casey Weed, joining me as he does every week, my good friend and co-host, Marshall Johnson here with me. Hey, hey. And we are here to discuss retirement with you. So if you're at retirement, in retirement, near retirement, or you're just seeking that coveted job optional status, you have found yourself a home. We're going to have a wide ranging discussion today talking about everything from the latest in long-term care trends how to avoid social security taxation, and why you may not want to roll that old 401k into an IRA. And we also have a leading, I guess I should say, the leading financial therapist in the country, Dr. Carl Palmer, uh, coming on here in just a moment. You're not going to want to miss that. But first, off the top, we're going to cover an article from our Weekend Reading for Retirees email series. That is an email you get every single Friday from my computer to your computer with four articles that are trending in the retirement planning space. That could be the latest in retirement trends from investment strategies to income strategies to tax strategies and also the softer side of finance and retirement. You can sign up at retirewithpurpose.com. First name and email will get you signed up. And we also do a full-length podcast on the article we're going to talk about right now. You can get a link to this article on the site. This one comes to us from Kiplinger, and it is titled, How 10 Types of Retirement Income Get Taxed. And Marshall, I think off the top, people are going to go 10, 10, 10 types of retirement income. Talk about multiple I, income streams. That? Right. But that's the thing about retirement, right? You, you get to retirement on your W-2s quite often. Mm. You, know, you had one source of income like your entire two, life, yeah. and all of a sudden it explodes in complication, in complexity, because you have all these different sources of income. You have Social Security, you have pensions, you have mutual funds, you have stocks, you have you have your IRAs and your Roth IRAs, your traditional IRAs, your 401ks, your 457s. Mm -hmm. Yes, it gets more complex from a tax standpoint when you get into retirement. And I think that's contrary to what most people actually think when they think about retirement being, well, that's a simpler time in my life. Yeah, I'm just going to save and save and save, and then I'm going to be in retirement, and there's not going to be any worries or concerns. But then we start to talk about taxes. And if anybody listens to the show with any regularity, they hear us talk about taxes quite a bit. And I love the subtitle of this article. It says, how 10 types of retirement income get taxed. When you're planning for retirement, it's fun to contemplate all the travel and rounds of golf ahead. But don't forget about taxes. Yeah. You know, people often ask me, you know, what I do and, and, and who we work with. And, and I often say, well, we are a retirement planning firm, but we specialize in working with purpose-driven retirees that are looking to elevate their impact in their community with their families and leveraging their experiences, their life experiences and the wealth that they've worked so hard to create. And yeah, that means we're really good at retirement income planning. That means we're really good at estate planning. That means we're really good at planning for the big picture when it comes to retirement, but where I get excited and where I spend most of my time in the practice and the families that I work with is when it comes to taxes. Mm -hmm. I love the opportunity to show people how to legally spend much less in taxes, how to sure. stop overpaying, showing them that they are paying more than their fair share. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's you know, a lot of times with taxes, it's you don't know what you don't know. Right. And so that's this article is kind of great because it walks us through these different types of income and helps you understand uh, how they're taxed and maybe how to arrange strategies. So you end up paying less. Well, five thousand a month is great. Uh, however, after taxes, netting three thousand, that's not so great. Mm -hmm. You know, what's really great is getting five thousand and getting to keep the whole thing. Yeah, there you yeah. Go. It's not about the gross, which is where most advisors focus too much of their efforts on is, hey, we're going to generate a 5% return, not letting you know that you're only going to keep 
four percent or three and a half percent of that. You know, mm-hmm. stop focusing on those gross numbers and always focus on the net because that's what's really important. That's what you actually get to put in your pocket. That's what you actually get to give to your kids. That's what you actually get to go out and spend on that awesome vacation. Exactly. Well, and the article kicks things off talking about state taxes and geez, that's a big deal right there. Talking about where you're going to be home state in retirement. You got nine states that don't charge uh, state income tax. And I'm looking at a, a chart here. And, and, and there's various states that are very favorable. And then there's a whole host of them that are not in anywhere in between. Yeah. And I think for most of you, you know, you're listening, you've probably got a 401k. You have an IRA. And most people we meet with are going to have one of those two vehicles uh, that they've saved the majority of their life savings in quite often. And mm-hmm. this is where people go, well, that's the tax time bomb. You know, that is what is often labeled as a tax time bomb because those IRAs and 401ks, you accumulate them. You, know, you, you basically got a loan from the IRS to put money in there. They didn't make you pay taxes when you put it in. They're going to make you pay taxes when you pull it out. And not only uh, are they going to make you pay taxes when you pull it out, but they're going to force you to start pulling it out right. after you reach the age of 72 mm-hmm. today. Yeah, except for this year with COVID. So the CARES Act pushed that back and everybody gets Last excited. Yeah, yeah, everybody gets excited about that. But but it's just delaying the inevitable. Pay me now or pay me later. Yeah. yeah I, I think where this article misses a little bit on the IRA distributions, they do share that, yeah, those are going to be taxed at your highest marginal tax bracket. It's going to be tax ordinary income tax rates. Uh, I think they miss talking about the other implications of that, where those distributions are potentially going to cause your social security become taxable and mm-hmm. potentially even cause Medicare premium penalties. And that's why we are encouraging Roth conversions with every single family we sit down with. We're, we're talking about how to strategically exit this unfortunate partnership you've created with the IRS for one, for your benefit, so that you minimize the amount of taxes you're going to pay over time. And if taxes go up in the future, we want to remove that risk off the table Mm -hmm. altogether, uh, but also for your beneficiaries. Because in here, they talk about the CARES Act. They don't talk about the SECURE Act. The SECURE Act made it so now your beneficiaries have to take those distributions from those IRAs at a much faster pace than they used to have to take them. And that means that they're going to pay more taxes at the same time. Yeah, they got rid of the stretch IRA. Uh, We used to be able to stretch. You inherited an IRA from a non-spouse. You could stretch that out over your lifetime. That's gone, right? Now we got to pay it over 10 years. And uh, and that gets a little tricky because a lot of the people retiring today, the bulk of their life savings is in 401ks and IRAs. In case you talked about Roth conversions and Social Security, there's a delicate you know, dance there between when you turn on those benefits, maybe you want to start Roth conversions, delay social security benefits, uh, trying to understand that not all of our social security has to be taxable. But uh, if you delay the the IRAs as long as possible, like many generations did, then it's going to hurt you on the back end. Oh, yeah. And, and I have a great example of that. And this kind of jumps around to the, the dividend uh, income as well. It talks about dividend income taxation and how qualified dividends, non-qualified dividends. Um, and I was recently sitting down with a, a gentleman and his wife um, that are from out west. And uh, we're sitting down talking to them. Um, about this windfall that they have. They have, um, he says in his own words, he goes, you know, I, I read your book and when you said accumulation advisor, I had to chuckle because my advisor actually referred to himself oh, as an accumulation advisor. Like a term of endearment there. <laughs> and he said, hey, you know, I, I, I need to have a retirement advisor at this time, but I might let him keep doing the accumulation stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, on his tax return, we could see all these dividends being kicked out and all yeah. these taxable gains being kicked out ordinary income tax rates, capital gain tax rates, all in all, yeah, he was uh, generating around $100,000 in taxable income wow. from this investment portfolio that was all non-qualified money. And he said, that's just going to satisfy my income in retirement. I'm just going to use dividend income to satisfy my needs. When well, about 10 years, his IRA is going to be worth about $3 million. Yeah, there you go. And his RMDs kick in at that point. And now his RMDs are going to be more than his dividend income. At that time, his overall income could be in the $300,000 range and continuing to rise throughout retirement. 
So what we're working on with him is one, let's look at these projections and see what happens over time. But now we need to figure out how to minimize your taxes over the long term. And we're implementing several different strategies in order to accomplish this. And that's what his advisor didn't talk to him about. He didn't mm-hmm. share with him that it, it, it was all good, right? Hey, I'm a dividend investor. I'm a dividend advisor. I like to manage portfolios to generate dividends and completely overlooking the fact that there's this huge IRA over here that's going to dwarf all those dividends down the road. And he needs to start working on today, minimizing those RMDs and minimizing those dividends so that he can have a level income over his lifetime. Mm -hmm. These are the things that you need to be working with a financial planner on. I mean, that's what a retirement income planner actually does is they do your retirement income strategy. And who cares how much retirement income you're going to generate if you haven't focused on how much you're actually going to be able to keep. Yeah. It's not about how much you return. It's about how much you're able to keep. And I think that's, that's often what gets overlooked because folks are just saving and saving. Like you said, getting to retirement is the easy part. You just save, put your head down, work, get up, go to bed, work, repeat. And then you get there and it, it, you've got dividends and you've got social security and all these different things and how they all come together is, is part of the puzzle. That's what really gets Howard Bailey excited. That's what gets Marshall excited and myself. So Mm -hmm. maybe you have an IRA. If you have an IRA, maybe you have some after-tax funds that are out there. Maybe you have some CDs, some stocks, some mutual funds. Maybe you have some savings bonds. One, I'd encourage you to go to retirewithpurpose.com, click on the podcast tab, listen to our full-length discussion on this very topic. But better than that, get a free tax analysis from our team. Sit down with us and we will put together a tax analysis that not only shows you how much you're paying in taxes today, but what it's going to look like in the future. And we can stress test that based on a rising tax rate environment and find the best strategy for you so that you can get that secure and independent retirement you deserve. So today we're offering a complimentary financial review. You can meet with an independent financial advisor on our team, either in person or you can do it through a video meeting from the comfort of your home. Just sit in your couch and we'll help you determine how prepared you are to handle retirement pitfalls like inflation, healthcare emergencies, stock market crashes, and and of course, like we've been discussing, taxes. In short, we'll take the guesswork out of financial planning for you and it can take just 30 minutes. So give us a call right now at 866-482-9559, a comprehensive financial review at no obligation. 866-482-9559. Get a free tax analysis from our team. Sit down with us and we will put together a tax analysis that not only shows you how much you're paying in taxes today, but what it's going to look like in the future. And we can stress test that and find the best strategy for you. 866-482-9559. Now for our question of the day. How many U.S. seniors would be at poverty level if Social Security didn't exist? On average, how many U.S. seniors would be at poverty level if Social Security didn't exist? A half a million, two million, seven million, ten million? We'll have the answer when we return. You're listening to Retire With Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. This is Retire With Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. Welcome back to Retire With Purpose, the science of retiring with confidence, the art of living with purpose. This is your host, Casey Weed. Joining me, my good friend and co-host, Marshall Johnson, here with me to answer our question of the day. And that is this. On average, how many U.S. seniors would be at poverty level if Social Security didn't exist? Marshall? Uh, The answer is 10 million folks. That's a big number. 10 million individuals. Wow. That's a big deal. I think it just shows you how important Social Security is and also why it's also often called the third rail of politics. People want to stay away from this piece because they know it needs fixed, but what's the problem? If they take a hard track here, they could leave 10 million people in poverty. If they fix it, then they're going to tax a whole bunch of people but, but at a much higher rate. That. You could be you could be a hero, right? If you somebody really, you know, got things done here, they could be FDR. 
If it was done in the right way, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, and that's what's going to be a challenge because in order to do it the right way, I really believe that it has to be super balanced, right? We have to cut here and there and there and there, Raise you know, we have taxes, yeah, but they're yeah. only focused on one thing or two things. Well, we're just going to raise the full retirement age. We're well, going to delay easier. benefits. Yeah, we're going easier. to reduce <laughs> some, we're going to means test this. Like if you just took all 50 of those potential solutions and took a sliver of each, a little bit, yeah, yeah. then now we're talking, you know, but that's probably not likely to happen, but it will get fixed. I am mm-hmm. confident of that. Now it's our turn to turn the mic back to you and see what's on your mind. Uh, We receive questions throughout the week from folks just like yourself. And if you'd like to submit your question to us, uh, you can go to retirewithpurpose.com. In the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, it says, Ask Casey a Question. That's legit. It comes to us. We'll give you an answer to that question. And if you would like to be featured here on the show, uh, we'll ask you if you'd like to be featured here on the show. And that's what we did with Gary in Toledo. Gary says, what are your thoughts on the need for long-term care insurance? And at what stage or age in my retirement planning process should I be thinking about it? Yeah, I find, uh, Gary, that a lot of the statistics will show that if you're interested in purchasing some type of vehicle, do that around the age of 60. Uh, I would suggest prior to age 65, your, some of your options and some of the, the strategies for paying for those policies changes after age 65. So I would say somewhere in 60, in that 60 range, um, and, and my thoughts on the need for long-term care, I believe some people have a significant need for long-term care. Some of this relates to your overall financial picture, your overall financial health, but also uh, your family history. Do you have a history of Alzheimer's? Do you have a history of dementia in your family? And an under Understanding these factors can can lead you uh, to a solution. And to me, that's a drop dead date. You, know, you get 60, 65. Mm-hmm. You have to take some action or it's simply going to be too, too late. late. Yeah. However, you know, I had a couple that I started working with in their mid-40s, and they had a close friend who had become incapacitated in his mid-40s, mm-hmm. and it, they're going to lose everything uh, in order to get him on Medicaid. It's It's been disastrous for their family. And he said, I don't want to go through that. I want to make sure I have this covered. I said, that's great. But first, can we afford it? You know, that that's the question. I think that's mm-hmm. when you are able to make the long-term care decision. I have long-term care insurance in uh, hybrid policies myself. I'm in my mid thirties mm-hmm. yeah, because I could become incapacitated tomorrow. I want to make sure my family is going to be okay. So, but I'm in a position that I've already taken care of my core needs. Now I can right. take care of these less likely events such as long-term care. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, I've done that through life insurance for myself. So the life insurance will pay out for long-term care needs. Um, so I've done it a little differently because I am younger. And that's what we did for this other couple that I helped. They were in their mid forties because they had already saved more than enough for retirement. They had extra money that was just laying around. They had some lazy money sitting around that wasn't doing anything anyways. And they could pick up long-term care insurance and fill that one big, one last gap Mm -hmm. in the retirement planning puzzle. And that's what I say, you know, it's the last major risk you should be covering. It's the last piece of the puzzle. When we put together a retirement income strategy, we're going to start with your purpose. We're going to take care of liquidity. We're going to take care of income. We're going to take care of flexibility, your estate plan, your tax strategy. The very last piece that we're going to get to, you know, we may not get to that until six months into our relationship. Mm -hmm. We're going to make sure we have all of your bases covered. Then we're going to get to that long-term care piece because, you know, the long-term care piece doesn't really matter if we can't afford it. If we can't afford it, we can't afford it. We can't get it. Mm -hmm. And that's the sad truth for many Americans is that it's expensive and they just can't afford it. It's not for everyone. And that's okay. That might be a risk that you're willing to live with. Like many of the families that we work with, they say, Hey, that's okay. I'm willing to roll the dice on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, we'll sit down with you. We'll evaluate. This is one of my favorite things to do is compare all the different options. I went through a spreadsheet of comparison options with, 10 different carriers, right? I- including, you know, investment options at the same time. What yeah. if we just invest right. the money? 
what does that look like over time? Share that with the team. We share that with the families we work with. We can plug and run all the numbers for you as well. Just give us a call. We'll run the numbers for you. 866-482-9559 where you can meet with an independent financial advisor on our team. You can do it in person. You can do it from the comfort of your couch. uh, And we'll help you determine how prepared you are to handle these things. Inflation, health care, stock market crashes, rising taxes. In short, we'll take the guesswork out of financial planning for you. And it can take just 30 minutes. So right now, give us a call at 866-482-9559. 866-482-9559. A comprehensive financial review at no obligation. You can also text that number, 866-482-9559, 866-482-9559. Next up, we've got uh, Laura. She's up in South Bend. Laura says, Casey, I just turned 62 and will be retiring in a few months, at which point I will also file for Social Security. However, I do have a side job that I will keep. I've heard there's a limit on the amount of income you can earn in retirement without penalties. Is this true? It's true. It's very true. Very Laura. true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No. Next question. No. <laughs> no, it's true. I there's there's some caveats to that too, and I think it's largely misunderstood. So in 2021, those numbers are about nineteen thousand sure. dollars. So if you turn on Social Security at 62 and make more than eighteen thousand nine hundred sixty dollars, then you're going to lose one dollar Social Security for every two dollars you go over that earnings limit. So if you're at let's say let's call it eighteen thousand and you're making thirty six thousand, then you're eighteen thousand dollars over the limit. You're going to lose nine thousand dollars of your Social Security benefit. But wait, there's more because they're actually going to give you a bump down the road. So, so you're not going to lose it. It's it's really it's delayed. It's really a forced suspension <laughs> there of you those go. benefits there you because go. they're they're basically saying, "Oh, wait, you actually didn't retire, so you don't actually need social you, security. You don't yet. actually need this. So we're going to go ahead and delay this for you and make this decision where we'll give you more down the road. It's just like you never actually took it at sixty-two right. in the first place, which means you get an eight percent bump every year, right? Um, and then if you're at full retirement age, which could be sixty-seven, uh, then it's $50,000. So in your full retirement age, you can make significantly more without uh, being concerned with the social security reduction. I had a farmer couple not long ago that we worked with that wanted to, they wanted social security. And we analyzed their benefits and looking at the two of them, it made sense that we went ahead and took her social security. Mm. It t- it made a lot of sense to go ahead and take her social security at that time because they needed just a little bit more income, but they wanted to delay the larger of the two, his yeah. benefit into the future. However, they've held the farm in both of their names. And so we changed the registration or the business structure of that mm-hmm. farm. So in a lot of farms, they don't even, believe it or not, they don't even have an LLC sometimes, right? Yeah. And so you might want to put that in an LLC and figure out which person you want to put that uh, that business in the name of. So mm-hmm. we put it in his name so she could take Social Security and not worry about that Social Security reduction. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Well, it's outside the box, right? So looking at these different streams, it, so that makes it so personal, right? So if you want to dig in and really understand Social Security and the different strategies, uh, don't be afraid to pick up the phone, call us, Laura. Uh, we'll go through that with you and show you show you what your best option is. Uh, We receive questions throughout the week from folks just like yourself. And if you'd like to submit your question to us, uh, you can go to retirewithpurpose.com. In the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, it says, Ask Casey a question. That's legit. It comes to us. We'll give you an answer to that question. And if you would like to be featured here on the show, uh, we'll ask you if you'd like to be featured here on the show. And our last question is from Rosemary in Fort Wayne. And she says, I want to roll over an old 401k account as I'm not happy with the investment options, but I'm worried about the potential tax implications. What do I need to be aware of? Uh, Rosemary, you need to be aware that you can roll over a 401k to a traditional IRA. And if you do that correctly, there's going to be no tax implications to you in the year that that's done. That is a reportable transaction. It's reportable to the IRS, but it is not taxable. Those funds will not be taxable to you till you begin to take distributions. Um, it sounds like you're unhappy with some of your options in your 401k. So one way to uh, get a, is roll that over to an IRA, then your opportunities are endless. Uh, but, but truly trying to understand 
what age you are. That could play a role here, Casey. Uh, if somebody's over the age of 55 but not yet 59 and needs money out of that, she may want to leave some in the 401k for, for income. Yeah, and, and there's different forms of doing a rollover. There's direct rollovers, there's indirect rollovers. And that's an important distinction too. I, if you just take a check, now you're doing what's called a 60-day rollover. You can right. only do that once a year. Yeah, yeah And we, we have a, a gentleman we work with that every year he brings in his rollover check, right? And we have to remind him every year, you really shouldn't do that. We mm -hmm. should do a direct rollover for this because we're really concerned that you're going to make a mistake, do it at the wrong time, have two, and it's going to be disallowed. So keep that in in your mind as you're doing these things. And another thing, you know, when I opened up the show, I said, you know, we're going to talk about the reason why you may not want to roll over that old 401k to an IRA. And that's the age 55 rule. So if you separate from service after age 55, you can take distributions from a 401k while avoiding that 10% pre-59 and a half penalty tax. And so for some of the families we work with, we might have them hold on to an old 401k if they decide to retire early, or they just need a little extra emergency buffer. We might leave some funds in that old 401k so that they can avoid the penalties that they might incur if they take an early distribution from an IRA. So a lot to think about there, but hey, we're here for you. And that's why we're offering a complimentary financial review for you right now, where you can meet with an independent financial advisor on our team. You can do it in person. You can do it from the comfort of your couch. Uh, and we'll help you determine how prepared you are to handle these things. Inflation, health care, stock market crashes, rising taxes. In short, we'll take the guesswork out of financial planning for you. And it can take just 30 minutes. So right now, give us a call at 866-482-9559. 866-482-9559. A comprehensive financial review at no obligation. You can also text that number, 866 4 Eight two ninety five fifty nine. Stick around because up next we have one of the premier researchers uh, on aging and leading therapists in the area of finance. Dr. Carl Pillimer is going to be joining us here in just a moment. So stick around. You're listening to Retire with Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. This is Retire With Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. Welcome back to Retire With Purpose, the science of retiring with confidence, the art of living with purpose. This is your host, Casey Weed. Joining me is Marshall Johnson and another very special guest. This is going to be Dr. Carl Pillimer. Carl is one of America's leading family sociologists, researchers on aging. He is the professor of human development as well as a professor of gerontology at Cornell. And throughout his career, Dr. Pillimer's research has focused in on how family relationships develop and evolve throughout people's lives. Carl is a best-selling author. He's written several different books on how to age gracefully with happiness and no regrets, as well as how to maintain a strong relationship with your spouse. This is where I became connected with Carl. I shared one of his articles in our Weekend Reading for Retirees email series, and it really came from one of his books called Fault Lines, Fractured Families and How to Mend Them, where Carl explains the effects of family estrangement and navigating how to reconcile these things. And if you stay tuned, I'm going to share with you if you're going through these things, if, if you're concerned about estrangement, you have that in your family, you have a fractured family, you want amendment and, and you want to mend it, then I encourage you to stick around for the end of this segment and I'll share with you how to get your very own copy of Fault Lines at no cost. And Carl was a guest on the Tire with Purpose podcast. This is going to be released as episode number 219, and you'll be able to catch it on the retirewithpurpose.com page and in your podcast app. However, we're going to highlight, give you a sneak peek right now. And if you want to listen to the full length interview, you can go to our Facebook page, Howard Bailey Financial, listen to the full length interview there. As we kick it off, I, I wanted to ask Carl a question, something that I often hear from individuals, younger individuals specifically saying, hey, friends are the family you choose and questioning whether our society has evolved in such a pattern that family really isn't as important as it once was. So is family still as important as it once was? Is family really forever? This is what Carl had to say. 
everybody thinks or talks about our society as sort of anything goes, traditional family bonds are breaking down, family is friends. I began to ask myself, why is family still so important? Why do people continue to care about these relationships, you know, as much as they do? So I interviewed hundreds of people, including some people who at the start of an interview would say, this is fine. You know, I don't see my parents anymore. Uh, you know, I feel good. I have other friends. And by the end of the interview, they would confess that it did, that, that something felt like it was missing. So, so that is an interest, you know, why, when you could let these bonds go, do they persist? Part of it is social pressure, for sure, that there's kind of a stigma against abandoning your family. But Casey, there's something else that we forget, especially with siblings and parents. You know, there are biologically rooted processes going on here of attachment that has, have been documented by psychologists for 60 or 70 years. Uh, and, and we don't just get over them when we lose someone. So we experience that as a sense of loss, even if our head tells us it's fine. You know, for me, listening to that, I, I think many times individuals say, you know, and I've met these individuals say, well, I haven't seen my kids in years. It's fine. You know, they're jerks, right? Or, or vice versa. Yeah. But if you really get to the root of it, you know, we're all, you know, connected to those family members. Even if we're estranged, we don't get along. Uh, we have a strong biologically rooted, uh, you know, sense of love sure. for these individuals, the sense of need, you know, to have those relationships. And, you know, Carl really walks individuals through and, and coaches individuals through even during our interview on how to reconnect and that it's not hopeless. Yeah. Yeah, there is still that ability for anyone, no matter how far gone those relationships are, to reconcile. Uh, and next up, I'm going to share a segment of this interview with Dr. Pillamer, uh, where we talk about this intergenerational stake in our relationships. And, and this is a really important takeaway. He said this is one of the things that became really important to him with all the thousands of individuals that he interviewed. He said what was really important for those individuals to understand, and he understands for himself today, is that these relationships, uh, the relationship is much more important to to either adults or children. And I'm going to let him explain which one that is. Yes, adult children love their parents. Yes, they often heroically support them. But in every study, parents care more. Parents are more invested in the relationship than their adult children are. And that's because you've invested all this um, emotion, resources in them, so that it's called, uh, it's called the intergenerational stake. Older parents have an intergenerational stake in their kids that's greater than their kids and their parents. And I say this in the book, so that when a parent that decides, as I found in my studies, and I bet that, that, that you may find around finances, a parent draws the line in the sand around, say, um, um, a gender or sexual orientation or value differences or violating the family's code or religious differences and says, you know, um, this is it to a child, it's much easier for that child to say, fine, uh, you know, I'm going to develop other options, I'm going to do other things. So the relationship is easier to exit for children. And especially for parents who are as old as me, I'm 66 or above, who grew up with this sense that family trumps everything else, that you can behave any way you want to in a family, and people may be mad at you, but they won't leave. I counsel but, you know, parents of adult children to understand that that is not true. They won't always be there. So you must develop relationships with your children that also have aspects of friendship that, that don't involve judgment and anger and hostility. This was big. I, I think this yeah. is going to be big for a lot of people I, because I, we have to recognize, you know, that that relationship uh, is much easier for a child to leave. Mm -hmm. And you have to find out what it's worth when you enter these kind of conversations. Uh, as a member of a, a dad's group, um, one of the things that we often discuss is that our children don't owe us anything. 
And I think we get that twisted in society. Your kids don't owe you a darn thing. My kids don't owe me anything because I'm the one that brought them into this world. I owe them everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's such an interesting conversation, especially with the families that we sit down with who have had some challenges with kids. And I think working, working towards uh, an understanding and a sense of that relationship is really important for both sides. One of the cool things about Dr. Pillamer and his research is in the writing of his three books. So he has a book, 30 Lessons for Living, 30 Lessons for loving and then of course fault lines which we're going to offer as a free giveaway here in just a moment uh, they interviewed thousands of yeah. individuals right. uh, thousands of elderly individuals to ask them different questions and, and get some tried and true advice. And there was one regret that continued to resurface as he wrote 30 Lessons for Living and 30 Lessons for Loving and that's why he turned it into fault lines. But I'll let you hear it from him. For parents of young children, Casey, they had a one strong recommendation that came up again and again and again, um, and that was the importance of time, of spending time with children, of carving out time, and having in a busy family life, and it's difficult, as much unstructured time as you can give to them. One of the biggest regrets, especially of older men, is in that generation was not spending enough time with their children. And even small units of quality time doesn't make up for this sense of really being there. Look, a two, a working dual career, um, a low income couple is going to struggle with this. But throughout the many relationships, this spending time with children is more important than sort of anything else. I know it sounds like a cliche again, but it was one of the major regrets of the old. And it's one of the ones I have to say, even before I did this, I kind of knew to do it. But, but it's true even after they become adults and with grandchildren. Th this notion of time is the most precious resource and thinking carefully how you allocate it is one of the strongest uh, pieces of advice uh, that older people would give. And it certainly applies to kids. It's not always about learning something new. It's about remembering mm -hmm. something true. And, you know, Marshall's one of those guys that spends more time uh, with his sons, one of the best dads I've ever known. And Thanks, he really buddy. embodies uh, being an amazing father and, and having as much of that unstructured time as he can possibly create. It's without a doubt the most important element as his, of his life, and, and he embodies it. And mm -hmm. uh, But I would still like to know, I mean, Marshall, I mean, just hearing that, isn't it a good reminder? I mean, well, will you do something even more? Yeah, I think. You know, even hearing it, it's like, okay, you know, what have I done lately? And I think too often our kids grow so fast and it's it's carving out that time uh, to be there and just making sure that the schedule doesn't get away from you sometimes. Well, I want to end with uh, the number one piece of advice that older people have for today's younger generation. And let's hear it from Dr. Pillimer. What you should do, uh, you know, uh, if, if they would say, if, if there's one piece of advice I would give to younger people or one thing I want you to put in that book, it's that life is short or life is really short or life is really, really short. Or as an older engineer said, it passes in a nanosecond. And the older you get, the more and more people would say at 90 or 100, they were the most likely to say, I can't believe how fast this went. One 99-year-old actually said, it's one of my favorite quotes, I don't know how this happened because the next thing you know, you're 100. Um, and that's the feeling of the next thing you know, you're 100. So they argue that for all of these domains, with your family life, child life, is to live life like it's really short. Um, and their view of younger people's ideas about time is the way like a desert tribesman, tribesman might view our profligate use of water that it's this unbelievably scarce resource that we absolutely waste. And that's, I think, this taking the long view as a parent. How's what you do now going to lead you know, to beneficial relationships later? As a worker, how is the savings I'm going to do now going to lead to productive 30 or 40 years? And as a new retiree, how am I going to use this incredibly precious resource because I have a much more limited time horizon? 
Well, we're going to wrap up with a special offer for you today. We've partnered up with Dr. Carl Pelimer to offer his latest book, Fault Lines, Fractured Families and How to Mend Them. Free to you right here, right now. In this book, Carl explains the devastating problem of family estrangement, the causes of family rifts, and ways to help repair these issues so that you can live a no-regrets fulfilling life. Uh, even if you're not experiencing estrangement today, I promise you this is a book <laughs> that will set you up to avoid it over a lifetime. And that's one of the things that I really attach to in this interview is how can I avoid these things, you know, with our children. Uh, we have a stack of books here and we're giving them away until they're all gone. So to claim your free copy of Fault Lines, contact our team now by calling or texting 866-482-9559, 866-482-9559. Stick around because when we come back, we have another great article for you today and how to fill one of your biggest risks in retirement. First-time callers are eligible to receive one in-stock book per request. Limit one book per week per household up to three books per calendar year. See full terms at howardbailey.com slash terms. You're listening to Retire With Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. This is Retire With Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. Welcome back to Retire With Purpose, the science of retiring with confidence, the art of living with purpose. This is your host, Casey Weed. Joining me, my good friend and co-host, Marshall Johnson, here with me. And this is our opportunity to cover one of the four articles that we sent out as our weekend reading for retirees email series. It goes out every single Friday, all designed to keep you on top of the latest trends in retirement. Each article will keep you on top of those latest trends with a simple breakdown and summary so you can find out what is most important to you, along with some commentary or big takeaways from myself. Uh, this article in particular we're going to highlight for you is titled, why single pay LTC insurance might be the right strategy now. Uh, I will say it's kind of a, a, a technical article, a little bit of a heavy article. Um, and if you're not concerned about LTC, yeah, you don't have long-term care insurance, it's probably not for you. But if you own a long-term care insurance policy or you're at that point in life where you're starting to evaluate it, start Googling long-term care insurance and you're going to be inundated with garbage yeah. um, because most of the articles out there don't tell you a whole lot. Most of the articles are going to come to you from those major media outlets where they've been written for the masses, they might tell you, hey, 70% of you are going to need long-term care insurance over the yeah. age of 65, and it's going to cost $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month. And yeah, that's great, but what should I do about it? You know, mm -hmm. This article was written for financial advisors to educate them on the latest insurance carriers, the latest products, and the best deals today, what they should be presenting to their clients. So when you're sitting down and talking with financial advisors, I think it's awesome that you already have this information. You know, I, I right. just got done reading Never Split the Difference by Chris Foss, and it's all about oh, negotiating yeah. by an mm -hmm. FBI negotiator, mm -hmm. right? And I also just completed um, a, a book by Annie Duke, How to Make Decisions. Say, yeah. yeah, And both of those mm -hmm. books, you know, talk about when you're going in to uh, consult, you know, and consulting is what you should be doing in a negotiation, right? You should be going in to consult, get to know more, find the best answer, which is the same thing on how you're going to decide you're going to go seek advice. And when you go seek advice or you go into a negotiation or a partnership, you need to make sure mm -hmm. that you have all of the information first and you want to figure out what your own personal preferences are first, or they're just going to adopt whatever their preferences are and direct you into the product that they think that they can sell you. Right. But if you go in with a little bit of education, that puts you in a much better negotiating position and a much better position to just ultimately make a better decision. And you'll be able to tell, are they really being honest? honest with you? Are they sure. giving you all the options? Because, well, you know that there's only one, two, three, four, six. There's only seven carriers offering long-term yeah, hybrid care right. hybrids. There's only one long-term care insurance provider. I mean, you'll have all of that information at your fingertips so you can go in educated and make a better decision ultimately on the back end. That's why I like this article. Yeah. I like this article because I sit down with families every week and undoubtedly one of the biggest topics of conversation is long-term care because they're dealing, you know, if somebody's newly retired or that age, uh, they're dealing with aging parents, or they have dealt with aging parents, and so they want to not be a burden to their kids. Uh, so for some people, long-term care is a really um, 
a weighty uh, discussion because you're going through a lot of stats, statistics, dollars, figures, uh, structuring policies in certain ways. That is all uh, all good. But in this article, they, they come at it from a single premium approach, which is just a little bit different. So things are changing. So you just got to stay up on the people trends. People think mutual funds are complicated. They think annuities yeah. are complicated. They think life insurance is complicated. Medicare is complicated. There's no doubt in my mind, long-term care insurance oh. is about the most complex mm-hmm. vehicle that you could add to your mix. But it's one of the most vital resources for you to have. For many families, it's the one thing that could knock them out of retirement if they don't have long-term care coverage. Medicare isn't going to cut it. They're not going to cover your long-term care needs. That's short-term care. So you're going to need a separate policy to cover yourself for home health care, assisted living, nursing home care that could easily run you into the seven figures into retirement if you don't have some type of coverage. And traditionally, yeah, it's been a traditional long-term care insurance policy. You pay a premium for the rest of your life. It will probably go up year after year. You don't know what the premium will be year after year. Um, It's just very expensive, very unpredictable. It's use it or lose it. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's kind of like your car insurance, only with higher premiums, and (laughs) they are totally unpredictable, right? Right. Um, And so it's something that is becoming a thing of the past, though. And this article Mm -hmm. is kind of going into that, that, hey, there's really not a good traditional long-term care insurance option out there anymore. There's, you know, maybe one carrier you might look at. Uh, it's arguing that uh, life insurance type products, one that have a rider for long-term care insurance attached to a death mm-hmm. benefit, these single premiums where you pay a premium up front rather than a premium year after year is pricing out better, arguably, today than those old yeah. traditional long-term care policies. And I think that's a new concept. Well, and you can also pay a single premium into a traditional long-term care policy, too, that it would be uh, potentially a better option than paying for it year after year. Right. And that's something that I don't think a lot of people know. They may have known their parents or a friend or a family member who picked up long-term care and then now they're 83 and they can hardly afford it. And, and so they hear those those horror stories. So now they're thinking, uh, well, I, I just I don't think I can afford it. But then they, they inherit hundred thousand dollars from from great aunt martha out in california now it's like what are we going to do with this hundred thousand well here you go you talked about how you had some concerns about long-term care let's dump it in a policy as a single premium you never put another dollar into that policy yeah and, and that's great i mean when it comes to the advantages of doing a single premium you know doing a lump sum into a long-term care policy you don't have to number one worry about any future rate increases right mm-hmm. you locked in the benefits you locked in the cost you don't have to worry about paying more And you also don't have to worry about the policy lapsing because you forgot to pay your premium, right? Forgot to pay the premium. All that money you paid in is now gone. Uh, You can include inflation protection. You can have a death benefit that if you don't use a policy, then everything you paid in then can go to your heirs with gains tax-free. And there are also quite a few products out there uh, in this single premium market where you can have your money back. You put money in. Mm -hmm. You can have that money back with interest. Maybe you have a little less lesson you put in. They're very flexible in how much benefit you want and how much liquidity that you want with that policy. Right. And that's different. You know, you talk about the the past LTC conversation was use it or lose it, or you couldn't have your premiums back. This kind of debunks some of that right away. And the the biggest downside to here is, well, you have to have a lump sum, right? You have to have have money money. available. Um, But for what I see, in many cases, you know, I have families that'll have a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars sitting at the bank, not earning anything. So the opportunity sure. cost is nothing. They don't have to worry about missing out on interest. They're gonna mm-hmm. make about the same amount of interest if we just move it into this long term care policy. And if they want it back, decide they're wrong, they can have the money back, right? It, it's a better solution to allocate those funds over yeah, here because, than just leaving it idle. Yeah, as the article mentions, you know, there's opportunity cost. Heck, you could you could go throw this into Bitcoin or stonks. And we know that stonks only go up. So, you know, that could be an opportunity cost there, right? That's right. So, and I really like, you know, that the article goes into some specific examples. Um, But first, the question is, you know, where should I get the money to fund a single premium long-term care policy? And one, I mean, there's cash, right? You could use cash. Uh, Number two, you could use your non-qualified investments. So, you know, you got to watch out there. If you have some capital gains built up, you may get hit with capital gains when you liquidate those things. Things. Maybe you have old CDs that are coming due and mm-hmm. you're not going to lose out much interest anyways because we're renewing at 0.25%. Maybe you got an old life insurance policy with some cash value. And that's where I've most often found mm-hmm. the, the best opportunity for those families that we work with is 
you have this old policy that you've held on to for the last 20 years. years. You have $100,000 in the policy. It has a $125,000 death benefit. So you have very little death benefit and you can't use it for long-term care. You, we can transfer that 100000 to a new policy where maybe you get double, triple the death benefit that you had before. And now you can use that death benefit for home health care, assisted living, nursing home care. You know, life insurance has evolved uh, so much over the years that you know, most of the policies, all of my policies have a long-term care rider attached to them mm -hmm. or a, an accelerated death benefit rider that I could use while I'm living. And that's a good reason to think about eliminating or restructuring some of those old policies that you might have. Yeah, you're serving two purposes, right? If you need the care, you can access the funds, but ultimately we're all going to pass at some points. So you know there's going to be a benefit there. And I, I love the, the example that they give here of a, uh, a state life product. Oh, is America this the, product? the dual policy on both yeah. the husband and the wife? Well, yeah. A particular product I, I've been really fond of over the years, and that's because this particular product is the only one that allows for unlimited long-term care benefits, mm -hmm. which, I mean, yeah, the likelihood of you needing long-term care fairly high. The likelihood right, of you right, needing right, it for right. more than two, three years, pretty low. Sure. But it's pretty low likelihood that your home gets struck by lightning and starts on fire. Mm -hmm. right? But it's a real problem if you don't have a place to live. And I lost a tree <laughs> this year. My house nearly got struck, but now I lost this big tree, too. So yeah, and just never that's know. why it's like... If we're going to cover an extreme situation, we might as well get coverage to cover an extreme situation. And this mm -hmm. is the only policy that allows for those unlimited long-term care benefits. So in this example, you've got a couple that are 61, 60 years old, decent health. They take $150,000 of their IRA money. They reallocate it over to the asset care product with One America. And then uh, they end up with a death benefit of $176,000 a tax-free death benefit of 176000 and uh, they end up with a lifetime long-term care benefit that's equivalent to $63,000 of annual income per person to help pay for qualifying long-term care expenses, and that never expires. Yeah. So you put in one fifty, and now you've got $65,000 times two for both of you. So mm -hmm. you have $130,000 in long-term care benefits that'll never expire. Day one. If you both yeah. ended up in a facility for a decade, that's $1.3 million in benefits. Ooh. I haven't seen uh, any other option out there that offer that level right. of coverage. Mm -hmm. So if you're going through this decision-making process and you're evaluating long-term care, maybe you have some old life insurance policies in place, you know, we can help you restructure the old policy. We can help you look for new long-term care benefits. But please make sure this is part of a broader financial plan. You shouldn't be going to a long-term care specialist, a Medicare specialist, an estate plan, or a tax plan, or a retirement income planner, an investment manager. You want to be able to see the big picture and make sure that you don't have any complications because one hand's not talking to the other hand. So give us a call right now for a complimentary consultation. Meet with an independent financial advisor on our team, either in person or through video meeting from the comfort of your home, and we'll help you determine how prepared you are to handle retirement pitfalls like inflation, healthcare emergencies, stock market crashes, rising taxes. In short, we'll take the guesswork out of financial planning for you, and it can take just 30 minutes. So give us a call right now or text the number 866-482-9559, 866-482-9559. A comprehensive financial review at no obligation. We'll catch you right back here next week on Retire with Purpose. You've been listening to Retire with Purpose, hosted by Casey Weed and Marshall Johnson. Investment advisory services offered through Howard Bailey Securities, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Working with Howard Bailey Securities, LLC, cannot guarantee investment success or that specific financial goals will be achieved. Certified Financial Planner Board of Standards, Inc. owns the certification marked CFP and Certified Financial Planner in the U.S., which it awards to individuals who successfully complete CFP Board's initial and ongoing certification requirements. Howard Bailey Financial is a registered trademark of Howard Bailey Financial. All rights reserved. Information is not intended to provide specific legal or tax advice. Howard Bailey Financial nor its advisors are qualified to give tax or legal advice. You are encouraged to consult with your tax or legal professional for guidance on your individual situation. This radio show is a paid placement.